Hey, my name is Dr. Jake Herndon. I'm a math tutor from Chicago. And in this video, I'm going to do a little bit of real analysis. So if you're a real analysis student and you'd like to think about sequences and subsequences for a few minutes, you can watch this video and think along with me. Um, before I get into things, I want to let you know that I tutor online. So if you're looking for a math tutor, you can contact me through herndonmathservices.com. Okay, uh, so I was looking through some real analysis exams and I found this problem and had some fun thinking about it. So here's a problem for you. Can you find two different sequences that are subsequences of each other? So uh, like I said, I had fun thinking about it. If you want to think about it on your own, pause the video and I will be here with the answer when you're ready. Okay, now onto the solution. I just found this question on a practice exam, and that exam had a solution on it. So I'll tell you that solution first. So here is that practice exam. Uh, it says, find two sequences such that each is a subsequence of the other. And the solution that they give is these two sequences. The first one is 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 repeating, and the second one is 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1 repeating. So yeah, those are two subsequences of each other, because if you remove the first term from the first sequence, you're left with the second sequence, and if you remove the first term from the second sequence, you're left with the first sequence. But then they say, if you know of a more interesting example, please tell me. So I thought about this some more, and I came up with an example that I think is more interesting, so I'll tell anyone who's interested to hear it. I prefer zeros and ones, so I'm just repeating what the other solution was. You can take the sequence 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and the sequence 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. These sequences are subsequences of each other, but there's lots of other examples. So here's a proposition. Let x sub n and y sub n be any sequences that contain infinitely many zeros and infinitely many ones and no other terms. So both x sub n and y sub n have to have infinitely many zeros and infinitely many ones and nothing else. And then in that situation, x sub n and y sub n are subsequences of each other. So there's lots of examples. The two sequences up here are way too special. So I will give the proof of the proposition here. So we'll show y sub n is a subsequence of x sub n. The other direction is pretty similar. The first term of y sub n is either 0 or 1, because every term of y sub n is 0 or 1. And both 0 and 1 appear infinitely often in x sub n. So let n sub 1 be the smallest natural number with x sub n sub 1 equal to y sub 1. In other words, I'm looking for the first time I see the first uh, term of y sub n in the sequence x sub n. The second term of y sub n is either 0 or 1, and again both terms appear infinitely often in x sub n, so let n sub 2 be the smallest natural number that's bigger than n sub 1 and has x sub n sub 2 equal to y sub 2. So after I found the first term of y sub n, I just keep scanning through x sub n to find the second term of y sub n. The third term of y sub n is 0 or 1. Let n sub 3 be the smallest natural number that's bigger than n sub 2 and has x sub n sub 3 equal to y sub 3. And keep repeating this. We get a strictly increasing sequence of natural numbers. And uh, that sequence satisfies x sub n sub k equals y sub k for every natural number k. And that says y sub n is a subsequence of x sub n. And like I said, to show x sub n is a subsequence of y sub n, it's pretty similar. So if you've got two sequences that are just zeros and ones, and they both contain infinitely many zeros and infinitely many ones, then those two sequences are subsequences of each other. So there's lots of examples of this. I want to give you my favorite example, though. So there is a sequence called the two Morse sequence. Two is pronounced two and spelled T-H-U-E. 
and it's denoted t sub n, and it's generated as follows. The first two terms of the sequence are 0 and 1. To get the next two terms, you take the previous terms and replace 0 with 1 and 1 with 0. So the first four terms are 0, 1, those are the two terms from before, and then you take the previous two terms and you flip them. So instead of writing 0, 1, you write 1, 0. To get the next four terms, you take the previous four terms and replace 0 with 1 and 1 with 0. So the first eight terms are this. It's 0, 1, 1, 0, those are the first four, and then the flipped four terms, 1, 0, 0, 1. The two more sequence is the infinite sequence of zeros and ones constructed by repeating this pattern. So you take the sequence you had before, you take the finite sequence you had before, and you flip all the bits, so zero becomes one, one becomes zero, and then you add the flipped part to the end of what you had before. The first 32 terms of the two more sequence are this. You can read them to yourself if you want, I won't read them to you. So I wanted to say something about a subsequence of the two more sequence. So here is that subsequence that I'm interested in. If you start with t sub n, the two more sequence, and you remove every other term, so the first term, the third term, the fifth term, the seventh term, you're left with the sequence that starts 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. So I'm collecting those terms here. The subsequence of every other term from the two more sequence is Tn prime. That's the same sequence I would have gotten if I just started with the two more sequence and switched every zero for a one and every one for a zero. This sequence starts zero, one, one, zero. The complement starts one, zero, zero, one. So the point is there's two ways to think about Tn prime. It's the subsequence of every other term, but it's also the complementary sequence. Okay, and if you remove every other term from Tn prime, you are left with the original two more sequence. So I wrote out uh, 16 terms of Tn prime, and if you cross off every other term, the terms that are left start with 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and that's the two more sequence. So all of that is to say that Tn and Tn prime are subsequences of each other in a pretty special way. You can get one sequence by removing every other term from the other sequence. So I think that's kind of a cool example. I hope you enjoyed it. And that's all for now. So let me just remind you one more time, if you're looking for a math tutor and you're interested in contacting me, you can contact me through my website. It's herndonmathservices.com. Okay, bye.